Hello and a warm welcome to News Across Nigeria. I'm Melinda Akinlami. On the program today, gunmen abduct one, kill three in the Sharia state in Lagos State. Governor Akinlami Ambode orders police to save the situation. Organized labor unions protest against government policies and attitudes to other national matters. And group draws attention to the spate of human trafficking in Edo State. Residents of Isheri North in Lagos State have again been thrown into confusion following the abduction of the estate secretary, Mr. Dayo Adekoya. He was abducted this morning by 11 gunmen who stormed the estate at about 9 p.m. on Wednesday before successfully taking him away at about 1 a.m. An eyewitness report says that three security men were killed as they tried to prevent them from escaping. <laughs> Angry residents of Isheri North Estate, some crying. <laughs> Others just looking confused after the kidnap of the estate secretary, Mr. Dayo Adekoya, who lives in this duplex. The gunmen reportedly shooting into the air for over four hours, scaring residents from coming close. I started hearing gunshots around midnight. I was scared, didn't know what happened. Subsequently started seeing police vans and all that. I had to wait till morning. When I woke up, went to the gate, found out that um, someone had been kidnapped and um, some security guys killed in the process. The house of Mr. Dekoya is now manned by armed policemen and our crew was not allowed into the premises to get a feel of how the family is faring. Not even the police officers could volunteer any information. You can't speak with us, sir. No, I can't. It's not my, within my schedule. This incident also claimed the lives of three security men who were trying to stop the armed men from escaping with the victim. They kidnapped the country this year, this morning. So, the time we will share, we get here from my own place around 12 o'clock. There will be some shooting all around this estate. Everybody was running. So, everybody will run to our place. The writer that will come, he came here. We meet the boys. They are black, black. They wear black, black clothes. They are attacking us. They, but this is you have any gun. They the security, the security them. They have no anything. They only give them a shocker. Imagine a shocker. Is it a bastard? And small tear gas, pepper tear gas, for that matter. See now, three people are dead. Two people injured. I shoot now. I don't know what's going to happen. This is the second time in six months that the estate will be witnessing a kidnap. The last one was in September 2016, when four landlords were taken away during their routine early morning exercise. Although the Commissioner of Police of Lagos State has promised to go after the kidnappers, there may also be needs to improve the policing of this estate, especially the swampy area where it is believed that the kidnappers may have escaped him. In the meantime, the Governor of Lagos State, Akim Miamvode, has condemned the kidnap of Mr. Adekoya, calling it a wicked act. In a statement released by his Chief Press Secretary, Mr. Habib Haruna, the governor has ordered the police to ensure the safe return of the victim and arrest the culprit. In the words of the governor, quote, the state police command must ensure the prompt arrest of kidnappers who stormed Isheria state area, killing three security guards and taking away a landlord, end of quote. He says this period is a trying time for the people of the area and asks the police to beef up security. And following that directive, the Lagos State Commissioner of Police, Fatah Owoshini, has promised to bring the perpetrators to book and free the abducted landlord. Mr. Owoshini, who visited the scene, confirmed the incident and has warned residents to be more vigilant and provide information that can help them with 
this investigation. He has been speaking on the risk posed by porous borders in the neighborhood. As regards to whether um, it's a shortfall, there is no society that is uh, completely free of crime. Um, in between the time we had the last one and now, it's um, a kind of time. And you have gone round with us around this estate. This is borderless. You've seen the porosity. You've also seen how the vulnerability of um, the households that are living here. Um, the reason for coming here is not to come and do rhetorics and uh, be talking what is not. It's the practicability of the whole thing to do a thorough assessment of the estate um, and see how we can work with the households here, um, considering the challenges, the security challenges, the challenges to policing an estate of this nature, um, infrastructure-wise, and of course, as I've told you, you've seen that it's borderless, it's uh, very porous. So to work with them um, with a view to ensuring that, one, um, we don't have a reoccurrence, um, and that if anything is going to happen again, that um, the way we respond will be more holistic and to be able to overcome. Organized labor led by the Nigeria Labor Congress, Trade Union Congress, and civil society groups have made good their promise to kick against current happenings in the country. Here in Lagos, hundreds of unionists joined their counterparts across the country in protest against what they call the hardship being experienced by Nigerians. The protesters marched through the streets of Lagos to the state government house in Alausa and finally the state house of assembly to make their demands known. This will be the second protest against the Nigerian government in a week. Meanwhile, the Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, has sounded it loud and clear to protesting labor unions that job creation, economic empowerment, and fight against corruption will remain the focus of this administration. He was speaking with a selected group of labor leaders at his conference room following their demonstration in the federal capital territory, Abuja. Again, the unionists reeled out their demands to the government, raising issues of governance and systematic corruption, which is a source of concern to them. We have been at the receiving end, and at the heart of this challenge is near absence of good governance, accountability, transparency, and the rule of law. Any system that does not have those ingredients of good governance in place, then certainly the first group of people that will suffer is the working class and their families and other citizens. And that is why today we are marching to canvas for good governance and also to learn our voice to say that the fight against corruption must continue. We are here today to ensure that we demand good governance. Yes. We are tired of corruption in this country. Yes. It is because of corruption. That's why even our president cannot stay here to attend medical services. Yes. Because they have stolen the money. Yes. Every 
here, look at the budget. There's a budget for provision of wooden hospitals, providing medical facilities, yet our hospitals are not only mere consult consultation now, they are completely empty. Our road, our people have been forced to die because the road are tracked it. There's no water. We have spent billions and billions of naira on electricity. Every day is darkness. Even in Abuja here, it's a shame. Coming up on the program, Governor Nasser El Rufai promises to wield a big stick against those fingered in the violence in southern Kaduna. That's in a moment. Stay with us.